Sergio Aragonés is one of Mad's maddest artists. Today, I'm looking at a collection of his best work from his first two decades at Mad Magazine. Hi, I'm Darren, these are my hands, and this is Sergio Aragonés on Parade. I'm going to clean up a bit here. Published in 1979 and collecting Sergio's mad art from 1961 to 1978, Sergio Aragonés on Parade provides a unique look Mm -hmm. into the decades just prior to his comic book knockout, Grew the Wanderer. And instead of simply looking at this book page by page, I'm going to suggest that we categorize Sergio's cartoons into three styles of art. Well, kind of four. And then we'll look at some favorite cartoons. So this is what I'm suggesting when I talk about four different styles of art. First, there's Sergio's minimal style of art. This is the art where Sergio draws only what's required to imply meaning. Maybe there's some pants, maybe there's some buttons, maybe there's some hands, maybe there's not. The second type of art is his standard cartoony art. It's a quick cartoon style. It's loose. Of course, there's some detail, but still much is suggested and not expressed. And he uses a lot of stock characters. The third style of art I'm going to call Standard Plus. It's very much like his standard art, but it adds the extra details, the non-essentials. There's some backgrounds. There's some shading. There's some hatching. There may even be some hidden jokes. And then the fourth style of art that I'm going to suggest we look at is the extra special art. It looks like his comic book style at a minimum. There are large drawings with maybe caricatures or developed characters. Extra care and attention is paid to the details. First up is the minimal art. We're looking for his art where he only draws what is required to imply meaning. And here's where we're going to see a lot of his marginal cartoons. So for example, look at this dude down here. He has no pants. He has no shirt. He's got a bandana on the top of his head to imply that he's some sort of showman. And that's all that's required. This chef here, he's got a chef's hat and maybe some sort of scarf around his neck. That's it. He's a chef. And what about this bank robber? We see no pants. We see no sleeves. He's got a gun and he's got the bandana. That's all that's needed for Sergio to let you know that he's the bank robber. This gag up here with the snake. You don't need to know if he's a zookeeper, if he's a camper. This fellow's job is not important to the gag. So he's not wearing a uniform. He's just the outline of a guy pinning down the snake's tail, unaware that the viper with the fangs is about to bite him in the butt. Same thing with this fisherman up here who's fallen asleep while the tide has gone out. Sergio doesn't need to dress him in hip waders or put some sort of sou'wester hat on him or nor'easter hat. I don't know what they're called. Some sort of fisherman hat on his head. You know that he's a fisherman because he's got a fishing pole with a worm on the end of his line. The minimum that is required is that there's a guy with a fishing pole and a pier with all sorts of gross ocean stuff on it that's exposed when the tide goes out. How about up here? Four guys in line with their pets. Maybe they're going to the vet. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what their situation in life is. All that matters is that there's a snake in this tube case thing, and it's making this fellow with the bird nervous. It's a bonus that they're wearing bow ties, but all you really need is the outline of those guys. A little bit more detail is provided down here. All these soldiers get their nice soldier hats, their guns, and their belts with their supplies on it and their boots. That's an exception, I think, in marginals. We are getting a little bit more involved in some of these drawings here, but take a look at this cowboy up on the top, playing his guitar by the fence. The joke is that the bird sitting on what appears to be a barbed wire fence here are the music notes. Yeah, he's a cowboy. You can tell because he's got a hat. But really, that's all that he's got that insinuates he's a cowboy. And that's all that matters. This is the minimal requirements for Sergio's minimal style of art. I like this guy with a hammock attached to a kite. It's absurd. 
And all that you need to know to laugh is that absurdity. Who cares what kind of guy this is? Who cares that he's not wearing pants or a shirt? The joke is in the gag. Kite holding up hammock. And while we're on this page, you know, maybe that's Sergio's self-caricature. These guys work at a grocery store. How do I know this? Because they've got a stack of cans and because they're wearing aprons like the guys at the grocery store used to wear. This is a great one. Another absurd playing with the art style to give you a gag. Yeah, he's a tightrope walker. Is he in the circus? Probably something like that. But Sergio doesn't have to tell us that. The joke is in the twang at the end of the line he drew. Minimal is what is required to get the joke across. So minimal is what Sergio draws. And this one across the top. Just enough to know that these are devils because they've got horns and pointy tails. And on the other side, we got angels because they have halos and wings. Who's winning the tug of war? Well, God is winning the tug of war and that's his finger on the line. Minimal is what is required to get this joke across. Let's take a look at what I'm calling Sergio's standard art style, that quick cartoon style. It's loose. Yeah, there's some detail there, but a lot of it is still suggested, not expressed. And most of the time he's using stock characters. Here we've got one of Sergio's first submissions to Mad Magazine, a mad look at motorcycle cops. And of course, the motorcycle cop is the stock character. It doesn't matter that it looks like he's the same guy in every drawing. It doesn't matter that he is the same guy. He is the stand-in for all motorcycle cops. But he's got the uniform with the helmet, with the goggles. He's got the badge. He's got the belt. He's got the boots. The cars and the surroundings, they give you enough information so that you know what it is. You can appreciate some perspective in some of the different cars and in the motorcycle and in the crunch. Still, much of the environment and the characters are just suggested, not expressed. Let's take another look at some standard Sergio artwork. Here's Sergio's A Mad Look at Garbage Man. And while each garbage man isn't the same from cartoon to cartoon, you can see this guy's got a, a big hawk type of nose. This guy's got more of a pointy nose. Here's a garbage man with a mustache, right? They're still kind of the stock character. They're wearing the same uniform with the sanitation department, badge on the shoulder, with the hat, fancy pocket. But when we look at the cartoons, we're just seeing the bare minimum to get the joke across. For example, in this cartoon, the garbage man is making romantic overtures towards this woman, not realizing that the husband is in the backyard raking leaves. I assume that he's the husband, but when we take a look at the punchline on panel two, we know what's happened. We don't need to see the neighborhood. We don't need to see the pile of leaves. We don't need to see windows on the house or anything like that. Nope, the garbage man thumped into the bottom of the garbage can, walking back to his truck. That's all we need. Same with this one over here. Garbage man comes to the garbage can, opens the lid, and the clown from the Jack in the Box pops out gives the guy a heart attack. I suppose Sergio could have even left out that there's a toy store in the background. It's really kind of inconsequential, but it's just that little bit of extra detail that he's giving. All right, let's take a look at some of what I call the standard plus style of art. It's where Sergio gives us extra details, more non-essentials. There's some backgrounds, there's some shading, there's some hatching, maybe there's some hidden jokes. And I think the heist on pages 31 and 32 is a great example of this, especially because this first page with these 12 panels really exemplifies the standard style of art that Sergio uses. And then when we flip the page, we get standard plus. So we've got the burglar. He's trying to crack the safe. And for some reason he runs away and he runs down the stairs and then he runs back and he's trying to crack a safe again. Uh, is this like on the floor below? Is this the same safe? I'm not sure. I did see him go down the stairs. Anyway, he works on the safe 
and then he runs away again, and he runs down the stairs again, and then he runs back, and he's working at the safe again, and click, oh, it seems like he's got the safe open. But then he runs away, and he runs down the stairs. He's very happy this time. What's going on? Let's turn the page to see more. There he is. He's come down one, two, three, four floors to crack the safe and to take the money, which is a funny joke. First page, standard art style. Punchline, standard plus, where Sergio pulls out, gives us a full page. We see the punchline of the thief stealing from the safe after working on these four floors, but then we get the whole cityscape behind him. There's detail, there's perspective. Look at these buildings. And there are hidden jokes as well. I'm sure I'm going to miss some of them. Let me know in the comments what you see that I've missed. But this is what I see. I see the Mad Zeppelin up here. Love that Mad Zeppelin. I see a billboard in the distance that says, read Viva Mad. I don't have Viva Mad, but I've got Sergio Aragonez mad about mad. Is this Sergio Aragonez holding a, a peace sign? Pax, his sign says. And then there's this bird, and my mad friends are going to correct me if I get this wrong, but I think that's the mad bird, and I think his name is Flip. Flip the bird. <gasps> Am I just noticing... Alfred E. Newman walking down the sidewalk here for the first time. Come on, hidden jokes. This is standard plus kind of art. I love it. Let's take a look at some more. Here we have a mad look at hunting. In this first little comic up here, there's no need to put this rug on the floor. There's no need to have an anchor tattoo on this dude's bicep. There's no need to have a little bit of shading to add dimension to this um, old taxidermied moose, I guess, with all the patches and stuff on it. We've got lots of trees and bushes in the background. Not required. It's that extra stuff that makes things look good. The camouflage on this hunter's coat. The use of um, different tone, different value to make the checkered pattern on this guy's hunting jacket. And you guys know that I am such a sucker for the way Sergio uses cross-hatching to differentiate between light and shade. So down in this corner, we've got this comic, a hunter at night. He's got his flashlight out. He's got this little bird in the spotlight. The bird is dancing. This is all very bright. And then he uses hatching and layers of tone to show the light sources. Take a look at the leading edge of the hunter here. It is all white, as white as the page will allow it to be. Same, same value as in the spotlight. And then it goes back to this tone. And then we have an edge where the shadow starts to appear and it's hatching and then the hatching gets darker so that it's almost a solid black at the very back. What a wonderful use of technique to show the light source. Oh, I love it. This is standard plus at the very least. All right, a mind blowing incident. This is a really neat example, I think, of the standard plus art style that Sergio uses. And this is very unique in this book and perhaps unique in Mad Magazine in that you don't often see Sergio really diving into the layers of tone value between dark and light to separate foreground and background in his comics. And I don't want to overuse the word dimensionality, but when we look at the faces and the contours of the bodies here, we see dimensionality created with these values of light and dark, a dark wall, a translucent but dark screen through the window. And the man sees something that he thinks needs attention, so he makes a call. And look at this scene here. We've got the city in the background 
And it's not just plain white. It's not just the paper color. There's a tone there that sets it back, but also separates it from the sky in the background. Yet, there's still darkness here and the darkness of the gentleman's suit bringing things into the foreground. Again, we've got it down here in the bottom left corner. The city is brought to the background. We can see the police and the gentleman brought more to the foreground through the use of tone. Now, I am sure that there are jokes in here, in this, in this cityscape that I do not see. Please comment below and tell me what I'm missing, but I think this is just using a great job of value. And then finally, the last panel, the gag, we see the fellow, he's just blow drying his hair. And again, the different use of value to give dimension to the characters, the line weight, some, some very thick lines for the edges of the characters, but internally much thinner lines, thinner lines to show the movement of air and the exasperation and the shakiness around the shoulders and the heads of the characters. What a great example, I think, of that standard plus. There are details here, and then there's just that bonus stuff. This is a great looking comic, in my opinion. We're going to move to the extra special style of art. And I think that there's a good example, just a few pages on here, of a comic that really looks like it's standard plus, but I think that you would agree with me that it really is extra special. All right, and here it is, the historical landmark. Now, if we were just to look at the characters, we would say, oh yeah, this is standard. This, this may not even be standard plus. These are just standard characters. And if we were to look at most of the backgrounds, we would say, well, okay, perhaps a case could be made for standard plus art style. You know, look, there's some shading and stuff going on on that wrecking ball. And yeah, maybe there's a little bit of, well, there's at least two tones being used to separate the background and the foreground. But when it comes to this building, the historical landmark, come on, look at those columns, look at the facade, look at all the the architecture words that I don't know besides columns and facade. This is beautiful stuff. Did you know that Sergio spent a couple years studying architecture? Of course he's going to be able to draw wonderful looking buildings like this. And I think that we're going even beyond the standard plus with a comic such as this. And we're getting into the extra special realm when we see drawings like this. I'm sure there's a big version of this comic on the left-hand side of the screen, so you can see all the detail. Sergio knows what he's doing with this. Dark, shadow, light. He's making it look three-dimensional. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And then crunch at the end. One more example I want to show of the extra special art style here. Now take a look at this. This is starting with Sergio's cartoon style, and then it's just elevating it so high above that. We've got, you know, large drawings. We have caricatures. We have developed characters. Extra care is put into all of the details here. And there is detail everywhere. Like, look at this samurai guy. That is, at the very least, a quality standard art style drawing from Sergio. And it's just on the floor in the background here. And then we've got caricatures of Al Jaffe. And I think maybe this is Bill Gaines here. I don't know all the gang of usual idiots. Please, mad fans, let me know in the comments down below who are all these folks in the mad offices. Of course, we've got Sergio in the middle. Like, check out this chair. Who draws chairs like this? Sergio draws chairs like this. It's amazing. Great stuff. This is extra special. All right, time for a little bit more about this book. As I mentioned before, Mad's Sergio on Parade is a mad big book. And it was printed in 1979. There was a reprint in 1982 that used a different cover. 
let's take a quick look at this cover. Now I'm going to flatten this out and uh, we'll see what I can do about getting you an even better looking, an even better, anything would be better uh, looking version of this cover. But on the cover, we've got Sergio Aragonez. He's the band leader. He's leading the parade. Alfred is behind him. And then Sergio's characters, his drawings are all following him in this parade. We've got a fireman and a samurai. We've got Santa Claus. We've got a weightlifter. We've got jugglers. We've got a guy with a moose head. Oh, uh, that's weird. A surfer, an elephant, a skateboarder. And it goes back on and on and on. And then on the other side, the back cover, as the crowd continues and we see the back end of the parade, Oh, what do we got here? Is this the Scarecrow right there? And the Tin Man and the Cowardly Lion? Oh, I wonder where Dorothy is. And we've got some soldiers marching. And we've got a Scottish dude and the bowling team and a lumberjack. And I was going to call him an elephant and a dinosaur. And at the very end of the parade, Sergio Aragonez and Alfred with their sanitation department uniforms on, cleaning up the mess that was left behind. That's a great, great cover, front and back. I love it when they, when they spread a cover across the front and back of a publication. Other books in the Mad Big Book series include the completely mad Don Martin from 1974, the vastly overrated Al Jaffe from 1976, Dave Berg's Mad Trash in 1977, and Dick Bartolo, Frank Jacobs, Mort Drucker, and others got their own Mad Big Books as well. Sergio was the feature of another mad big book in 2010, Mad's Greatest Artist Presents Sergio Aragonez. Now, I want to take a look at the inside covers as well, because there's some great work here. And I'll just show you that the back inside covers are the same as the front inside covers. But there's a few things that I'd like to point out that I thought were kind of neat. First of all, here's the Mad Zeppelin. Always like seeing the Mad Zeppelin putting around. Got a couple samurais battling here. Always love the samurais. Karate guy with his nunchucks smacked himself in the head. Go to admit, I've done that myself once or twice. Talking about the detail that Sergio can put into his drawings, take a look at this model ship that this dude is holding here with the sails and the rigging and the flags and the shape of it all. Man, Sergio knows his stuff and he can draw this kind of stuff in all of his artwork. It's amazing stuff. You know, I'm a sucker for a fish comic and here's a fisherman with his hip waders full of water and he's catching a fish in his hip waders. That's hilarious. Ah, I think that's hilarious anyway. And down in the corner, Sergio Aragonez is signing his work. Oh, wait a second. Take a look at these bicyclists here. We've got a bicycle race going on and the leader of the race has stopped to let this old lady cross the road in front of him. And behind him, it's a massive pileup of bicycles. Well, hang on a second. Haven't we seen that before somewhere? Why, yes, we have. You'll recognize this. It's the world's funniest sports puzzle by Sergio Aragonez. And come on, not only is this the same gag as this, but holy cow, it's practically the same artwork all the way along. What do you think about that? 1978, 1980. You know, Sergio is totally allowed to recycle his gags. We pay for the same jokes in Gru Comics year after year after year, and we're very happy to do so. I just thought it was funny to see the gag that I'm familiar with from the sports puzzle in the inside covers of Sergio Aragonez on Parade. Now, 
If you have the opportunity to take a close look at this book sometime, you're going to want to spend some time with the Wondrous Woodstock Music Fair, Double Page Spread, a poem written by Frank Jacobs and illustrated by Sergio. This is one of those amazing crowd scenes that we love to look at that Sergio has done. Look at, there's piggies running around. There's the Mad Zeppelin. What other kind of crazy stuff is hidden in here? There's Alfred, and there's so many hippies in here, we've got to be able to find at least one proto grew, right? Now, while Mads Sergio Aragonez on Parade does collect more than 150 pages of Sergio's contributions to Mad Magazine from just his first two decades there, it doesn't cover it all. So watch this video now to see more of Sergio's mad artwork. Click here to subscribe and be sure to turn notifications on. And if you love a parade like Sergio loves a parade, the algorithm thinks you should watch this video next. Take care, everyone.